Hi, uh, I will now explain to you a little bit about uh, quantum tunneling. Now, in classical mechanics, we have uh, the that the system basically has energy conserved, and the energy expression is one half mv squared plus v of x, where v is a potential function. And and what this function does is basically its derivative or its gradient gives you a, the velo the sorry gives you the force. All right, uh, on the particle at you know at, at position x. So when the particle happens to be in position x, the v of x you know a, by taking the derivative gives you the force that you get there. Now it turns out that the, the first quantity here, this quantity right here, that's the kinetic energy, right? That's that's usually called the uh, you know k. So one half mv squared is really just k, the kinetic energy. And if you look at it, right? The mass is positive, okay. The the one half is positive, and this velocity squared, which you know, in in when one dimension is just v squared, when you're in, in higher dimensions, it's it's basically the 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 size of the vector v squared. But uh, either way, right, that everything there is positive, so the quantity k is positive, must be positive. So then, uh, in short, you can write energy E equals K plus V of X okay um, now if you move the V to the other side you notice that that E minus V of X which is K that must be positive so now I've drawn this graph here with the X axis here okay and the vertical axis is this abstract axis and um, just just to give you the value of the function v and then imagine that that you happen to have the energy uh, value 5 so e is 5 okay then as as you see there whenever uh, e minus v is negative in other words whenever the graph dips below that that level line at uh, 5 those uh, or or rather uh, uh, or rather I should say above in, in other words because because uh, you are supposed to be you know below that line in other words you're, you're allowed to be in parts where where the graph of V dips below that uh, line 5 but in the other areas where the graph of V goes above you notice that on the x-axis I have those darkened regions those three darkened regions those are what are called classically forbidden regions for that energy so at energy 5 you simply cannot be in those uh, in those regions there you can only be you know in the in the light colored part of the the x-axis and the undarkened part of the x-axis so only in those two little places below where that little mountain looking thing dips okay all right so basically the dark area is what is called the classically forbidden region and, and if you have that energy for sure then for sure classically you cannot be in those uh, in those dark uh, regions you must only be in the, in the other ones, in the, uh, the two little pieces that are not darkened. Now, if you happen to be in one of those pieces, and there's a part like that, in like the one in the middle, like the darkened part in the middle blocking you, you cannot get across to the other piece. Okay, why? Because motion must be continuous, but then you would have to cross that region, right? Because you're, you're, there your motion is really just on the x-axis. So you would have to cross that region, but you can't. You can't continuously cross from one you know spot and have that darkened spot in between and, and cross to the other side okay so classically if you're in one of those regions you stay there with that energy you just don't have enough energy to move to the other side okay so now we'll look at a quantum situation related to this so this right here sort of like a squarish w looking potential this, 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 right? That's what is commonly called the double well potential. Okay, so now, uh, in, in once you have the, that potential, and you're looking at that quantum system, so you're looking at that as a quantum system now. You um, you want to find the basically the eigenvectors of that uh, Hamiltonian because the Hamiltonian also involves you know just like in the classical energy expression 
it involves a kinetic energy term and a potential energy term. And when you look at the Hamiltonian for that system, it turns out that if, if you look at the two lowest energy eigenstates, if things are chosen correctly, it'll turn out that they'll have energy that are that are they all have energies that are below that barrier in the middle. Okay? So for sure you know that, that at those two uh, if things are chosen correctly, if parameters are chosen correctly here, you can have the case where where both of these uh, low, two lowest energy states have energy below that barrier. All right. Now, say that uh, say that say that uh, okay. So the so these uh, energy eigenstates uh, that I mentioned are u and v here, and u has energy e1, v has energy e2, and now say you have a sum of those two. So you have a sum of uh, states u and v. Okay, the sum of those two states it has energy. Like when when you look at the energy distribution that it has, it it, it only has energies of e1 and e2. So it has a certain probability of having energy e1 and a certain probability of having energy E2. And in fact, that uh, that mixture of just uh, U1 plus V, I mean, U, sorry, U plus V, that just has, you know, the same probability of having U1 as, in as you know, uh, uh, that as E2. Okay? Now, um, here I've drawn in dark, this dark uh, wavy thing right here. That's the position distribution for the for the uh, for the, for the state uh, u, okay. So for the wave function u, whatever you want to call it, you know, just the, the quantum state u of the particle, that wavy thing is sort of you know the the probability distribution for position. Uh, should I say that? Well, maybe not. Maybe I should say that that's actually a an actual drawing of the wave function in position space. Okay. All right. And the other one, the one that's like a double mountain right here, right? That's the, the drawing of the wave function, or one of the possible wave functions, since you could always put a complex unit number in front. But anyways, we, uh, so it's the way the positional wave function of the state uh, u. So now there's the wavy one that dips to the bottom. Is is the the position? Uh, wave function, the position space wave function of the state uh, V and the first one, the double one, is the one for the lower, you know, the lowest energy eigenstate, the one with the double mountain and that's just that double mountain is the, again, a drawing of the position space uh, wave function for that state. But at the end of the day, they're just two states, they just happen to have that, you know, those position distributions and now we're looking at the sum. Now it turns out that if you begin with that sum of u and v, and you start time evolving it, you notice, let's say we go, you know, from uh, from left to right, you see that you can begin at, at a state like this, where all the probability distribution is concentrated on the left. So this is at time zero. Then at time one you're like this and at time two you're like this so in other words you begin with with, with a with a situation like the state at first all the probability is concentrated to the left sometime later so so basically what what that means is is this that if you look for the particle if you start the experiment with that state and you look for the particle you'll always find it on the left side. So you do the experiment a thousand times and you find it on the left side. The chances of you finding it on the right side, I mean, they look greatly exaggerated in the picture, but they're like tiny, 0 0.001, so hardly nil. All right, then you wait later time. So you set up the experiment the same way, you know, beginning it the same way, you wait. And at a later time, at time uh, one, you look. And there you'll find that half the time you'll find it on the left side and half the time you'll find it on the right side. Okay, so you set up the experiment again the same way and you wait to time two. Now when you check there, you'll find that most of the time now you'll find the particle on the right side. 
you'll hardly ever, you know, 0.0001% of the time find it on the left side. Okay? Now, one interesting thing too, if you notice throughout the, the evolution of this thing, is that if at any time you try to look if to see if the particles on the barrier, the probability is tiny. So essentially, you'll never find it there. So what that means is that you have a situation where you begin at one side, you get to the other side, but you're never in the middle, so to speak. So you sort of jump just from one side to the other without ever being in the middle. Okay, now the nice thing about this example is that for sure that state has either energy E1 or E2. But you know that classically neither of those energies is enough for you to get from one side of that barrier to the other. Okay, because that region, you know, where the barrier is in the middle is classically forbidden for either of those energies. So you begin with a state that you are sure that you had one of those two energies and then it gets from one side to the other. So something that is absolutely forbidden classically. Now, why do I like this example? Because this. Often they try to, to explain to you with, uh, with the alpha uh, particle tunneling out, the alpha nucleus or whatever it is. Now I forget uh, which way it goes. But, but anyhow. Um, and there they, they model it sort of as, as a radial, uh, radially as, as a sort of like a, a square well. And then you have that outside of the well, you have a, a, a wave of the same height, infinitely long, and then you notice that that state is not normalizable. So you're dealing with something already undefined to begin with, and trying to make sense and speak of this tunneling things where you have something that just doesn't make sense. Okay? Um, and there you'll, you'll see this business of uh, transmission probability and reflection probability and stuff like that. The problem is, again, it's very confusing, you know, when you have a state that's not normalizable to begin with. Okay, then comes the other thing. Sometimes too they'll, they'll show you this as a, as a wave packet hitting a, hitting a barrier, right? And the average energy of the wave packet is lower than the, the energy of the barrier, basically. Okay, then the height of the barrier, so so basically, you know, it's, it's uh, if the particle had that energy, it couldn't cross from one side to the other. The problem with that wave packet, though, is this, that usually the mixture needed to make the wave packet, right, has energies well above the barrier. So in other words, you, sure, you have some chance of being below the barrier, but you also have some chance of being above the barrier, so it shouldn't be any surprise that you get across to the other side. So that's why, you know, the, those uh, examples I don't like as much as I like this one, because this one clearly shows that you can cross from one side to the other, in fact, you know, you, you totally do cross from one side to the other and back too, because afterwards you keep, just keep oscillating, without ever, and, and, and you know this with exactitude, having the, the energy high enough to cross that barrier. 